Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I am going to finally do an often requested video and that is dyeing yarn in a crock pot with food coloring. Today's video is sponsored by Susan Branson. Thank you so much Susan. Today we are going to be dyeing 100 grams of Swish DK. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino. And we are going to dye it using some red and blue food coloring. Today I went for McCormick's food coloring because their blue is a nice deep blue versus the brighter neon blue um, that they have in that line. And I thought that we could create something that is really beautiful and inspired by the new Chemnitz fish, Froggy. I pre-soaked the yarn in some plain tap water for a little over an hour, but 20 to 30 minutes would be totally sufficient. My slow cooker is a Breville uh, multi-pot. Um, I use it most frequently for rice or to make stews. But today, we are gonna stew some yarn. I started off with four cups of water. Now I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of white vinegar. While I have dyed a lot of yarn, I have never used a slow cooker to dye yarn before. Um, but we will see. Sort of arranging the yarn a little randomly into the pot. All right, and the four cups of water is enough for a nice sort of low immersion setup here. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go ahead and add one more cup of water. Now an advantage of a slow cooker is that it heats slowly and will, can maintain the temperature for a long time. But you can definitely sear things in it, so you don't want it to get too, too, too hot. All right, now the yarn has a little more space to move. All right, I am going to put this on slow cook low. Um, and before we start adding the dyes, I want to let it get heated up. We'll see how long um, this takes for it to get hot enough where I want to start adding some color. Since this yarn is a super wash yarn, Colors will strike pretty quickly. I would say that the amount of acid is one where the colors will start to bind pretty fast, but I plan to add the dye and do a tiny bit of agitation to help the colors spread through and hopefully give us something really beautiful. All right, tw about 20 minutes in, I'm starting to feel some warm pockets. Um, yeah, it's starting slowly, slowly to get warm here in the pot. Um, and you can see, of course, I'm moving it around. Um, I'm a little impatient. <laughs> but the nice thing with the Superwash yarn is that um, it can hold up to some agitation. So I'm not worried about that. But I do want to let it get a bit warmer before we start adding the dye. It has now been about 40 minutes, and all right, we're, we're getting nicely warm. It's not hot, but it is warm. So let's start adding some dye here. And I'm going to think, I think I'm going to add the liquid drops directly here, and then subtly agitate things to help them spread a little bit, but maybe not too much. I'm probably going to need a lot of the red, so I'm hoping to get some red, whoop, versus pink. And I have lost count already. But I also want to move this aside. Just add a lot of red over there. And so if I did not poke it, if I just sort of let it sit, then the color um, wouldn't necessarily spread as much. But by, you know, moving it and doing this, I'm giving a chance for some of this color to 
um, strike more of the yarn. There could be some white. Um, I could always add more red in a little while, but yeah, I'm sort of just going for it right now. So that was a fair amount of red, and I will say right now it is looking red to me versus pink. When I dip dyed with this in the past, I definitely got something that felt more pink. Now on this other side, I'm gonna do blue. Okay, so write that, and that was about 20 drops of the blue. And you can see that this is a bit deeper, um, a bit darker than uh, some of the ones that just, I mean, I believe that this is just blue number one. It might just be that much more concentrated, which is why um, it doesn't feel as bright as, say, Wilton's Neon Blue. Um, I have no idea how far these are transitioning in the middle, if we're getting, gonna get some purples or what, but we definitely have some deep blue and lighter blue. Okay, there's lighter blue on the bottom. We might need to check on this in a little bit and add more dye. Um, I would say right now on the surface, what I'm seeing is close to what I want. Um, some deep red, actually, yeah, let's add some more red. <laughs> I want a little more maroon. I don't know if this will get us there, but let's add more red. We're in slow cooker after all um, and right now I can just see what's going on on the surface I can't see what's going on beneath we could have these bright dark colors up here um, we'll have some purples at the interface but on the bottom it could be all purple it could be all blue we won't know for a little while I am gonna add well I might not have a lot more blue I think I might have be using most of it. Um, in general, blues take a lot more heat, acid, and time to absorb than reds. Um, so reds typically go a bit faster. But, all right, we will see. We're still on our low, slow cook. We've got our colors in here. And I'm gonna pop the lid on. And let's come back in I think 20 minutes and see how things have changed. If these colors have spread over a lot, which they probably won't from where we're looking at this vantage point, but they could. And yeah, I'm really excited to see where this will go. It's been 20 minutes. It's not super steamy. It's definitely getting warm, but I don't see anywhere, anything close to any bubbles. Let's look. Oh, that looks clear. Um, funny, there is still a little bit of red in here, but the blues look very clear. There's definitely, though, some white on the bottom. Um, yeah, if I pluck this up, yep, you can see that there is some white, maybe just in that center portion. Huh, this is turning into quite the patriotic yarn. Um, <laughs> All right, I am going to, goodness, I'm gonna let this go 10 more minutes. Then I think we'll remove the yarn, shift it, so then we can try to take care of some of that white down there. Okay, I'm curious. Okay, so it's definitely hot. It's not near boiling, and I feel like, you know, I wouldn't want to leave my hand in there for a long time, but I definitely, definitely feel like I can touch it. All right, Susan, I'm going to attempt to flip over your yarn. There we go. Let's ex let's um, sort of reveal this white part. I mean, this is a beautiful red, white, and blue colorway right now. It isn't quite what I really want for this yarn. Um, I'm trying to expose as much of this white as I can. I think that it is mostly just in those regions that were hidden, but we can always 
kind of go about this again in a little bit. All right, I'm gonna dry off my hands. There's a little bit more blue food coloring left, but not much. See, I'm going, oh, that's some cool like speckling. Hitting the bottom of the barrel there. But if you give it some good tapping, then uh, you know it takes a little bit of time for that color to set. Uh, okay, giving us some paler blues in there. Let's see if I can get a little more out. I wonder if I can. Water's too hot; it could melt this bottle. But we can get some more of this blue out. Yeah, because there's definitely dye in this bottle. It actually doesn't seem to really be melting it. So I think that, you know, the heat on low is like a pretty nice low uh, position. Cool. All right, I think that that gave us some more more blue. We definitely will have some nice dark patches, um, but the colors are spreading out nicely as well. So I think that is going to be pretty. And now let's give us um, some reds. We might have some blue specks over there as sort of a, oh, I definitely have blue dye on my fingers. Little unintended consequence. And I still have plenty more red. So let's Let's go for it. Just, again, not really counting with this red. Just sort of going for it. And I am now, that was a lot of red. I would say, I don't even know how much that was, but have some purple in there. Hopefully, that will get rid of a lot of that white. Um, we'll have a little more purple now, but, all right, let's go ahead and give this a bit of time. I'm curious, see this like nice, really like dark, dark patch. Could have been an area that got a ton of red <laughs> when I added a bunch to the side. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, this is like an, an exercise also in a lot of food coloring. I would say, there's anywhere between 100 and 200 drops of food coloring total in here. Um, but yeah, I think that Susan, you're gonna get a really, really beautiful skein of yarn. The 20 minutes are up and ooh, the lid is finally starting to feel warm. I suppose we are close to an hour since started. There's a hint of pink left behind. Um, but I am now curious to see if, I see a pastel patch, but I'm curious to see if we see any white. Um, we have, oop, there's some pastel blue. Um, but otherwise I think it's fairly good. Maybe, let's see if I can add a tiny bit more. that did not go very far. Looks like a bit on the top and then you poke it in and less so. Do, do, do. All right. Like the one last hurrah for some additional color. <laughs> All right, but I'm actually going to stop the, the heating now, but I'm going to leave this in the pot to cool off. When it comes to using this uh, slow cooker versus using a stove on the oven, um, that's pretty different because the heat stayed really low or below a boil the whole time. And so I think that there's a level of consistency you can have with this. 
And especially if you don't have access to a stove, then, I mean, this is definitely a clear winner. And I know that mine came with a steamer basket, so you could use this as a steam basket as well. I think for higher heat, it can definitely get to like a full low simmer. So we could have done the slow cook high option um, and that could have made it hotter. But yeah, I'm now, I mean, I'm really curious to see what the yarn is like. I mean, obviously I can stick my fingers in. I wouldn't do it for like a long, long time, but it's not hot enough to burn. But I will let it cool off a bit and then we'll take the yarn out and see what it looks like. I don't think I quite hit froggy's colors, but I do think we have a really pretty red and blue thing going on that I'm excited to see what it looks like. It's the moment of truth. Let's see how our froggy inspired yarn looks. Now, I can't really tell if I'm seeing color runoff, but actually that looks fairly clear. So that's good, but let's take a look at, ooh, oh, this is cool. We've got some blue sections, some red sections. Ooh, this is beautiful. All right, let's turn on the water. All right, let's look at the first look here, yeah, but I think all of the color is in our yarn. Ooh. Yeah, I really wonder what is in the McCormick's blue, if there's any red in it or something. It does feel a little deeper than the neon blue, but it just might be, um, it could potentially be more concentrated. I'm now adding some clear dish soap to see if we get any color bleeding. Um, and the reason why I'm curious is because the Wilton Colorite system only comes with one blue. The reds are definitely more potent, but I'm not sure about the blue. There's a hint of red bleeding now with the soap, but we are gonna see what we can do to make sure that that rinses out. And yeah, I'm not seeing any more. But anyway, I'll come back if there is any notable bleeding, but that's looking rather clear to me. And then I am going to go put this yarn through my salad spinner and then hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn that we dyed in a slow cooker. I had never used a slow cooker to dye yarn before. And I have to say that it worked really, really well. The temperature was kept low, consistent, didn't overboil. I think the only complaint I have about the slow cooker is that it's a bit slow. It takes a while to heat up. Um, things go a little bit faster when I'm using the gas stovetop. However, this is some, the kind of thing that you could bring outside. It's very portable. You aren't limited to your kitchen. So I think that this type of setup is something that could work for a lot of dyers, especially since you can usually find slow cookers and crock pots um, at secondhand stores for a really good price. And so that could be a great way to get a dedicated dye setup, especially if it's um, if you prefer to not use any dyes in your kitchen. I have not yet gone back to count the number of red drops that I added, but this yarn absolutely reads red versus pink. Um, there's a little bit of pink in there where the red is a little less saturated, a little bit of baby blue, but then we have these gorgeous, gorgeous patches. Um, and I think that, I guess another thing is don't be afraid to move the yarn a little bit to help the dye spread to where you want. You can drop the dye directly on top and leave it there and then you'll get more intense patches of color in a smaller area. But if you wiggle the yarn and kind of let the, the dye move around a bit, then you can get these larger patches of color. For mixing two primary colors together, there is really not that much purple. There is some purple in, in some areas, but really the physical, I guess, 
resist the low immersion, the restraint from where the dye is placed really did limit the amount the two colors mixed together. And where the colors did mix together, it's reminiscent of a great Kool-Aid color versus, say, Wilton's Violet. Um, because I think that the violet has more of a pink, a lot more of the red number threes in it, whereas traditional red, red food colorings have a mixture of the two different red colors and are a little deeper and result in a deeper purple. I think I need to buy a standalone vial of the McCormick's Blue and do some dip dyeing. I'm curious that as it gets a little less concentrated, if it is as bright as, say, the Neon Blue, um, and I really wonder what it is that makes it sort of a deeper, uh, a little more muted, and it could be the concentration, um, or, yeah, I don't really know. Susan Branson, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And I really hope you enjoy this yarn where I picked a colorway inspired by our fish Froggy. If you would like a little update on Froggy and what I've learned as an adult fish owner, especially about the quality of my tap water, um, go check out a blog post that I'll be publishing shortly on cabinets.com. Long story short, I am now very curious about the difference between using my tap water for dyeing yarn versus bottled water. And I think that that is something that I also want to explore more in the future. If you would like to sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, like Susan did today, uh, you can find a link both in the video description and the iCard to the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. You will get shout outs in the video itself, plus 100 grams of yarn that I dye in the video just for you. So you should really check it out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, give the video a like, leave a comment. Uh, you really don't want to miss anything. I take viewer requests seriously, and I know you guys have been wanting me to dye yarn in a slow cooker for a really, really long time. Um, all suggestions I get go on to a list and I frequently draw from it as I am creating new content. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this video.